Let me introduce uh, Mahalakshmi ma'am. Like she is an assistant professor, and head of the department of English in AVP College of Arts and Science, Tripur. And she's a very uh, reputed speaker, and she's known for uh, counseling and guiding number of scholars uh, who have become, um, you know, well scholars in the society in Tamil Nadu. And ma'am's words are so piercing to number of scholars as we have come across. Uh, ma'am, we are really happy to receive you yes, on this sir. session. Uh, kindly lead the session. We are proud of you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, sir. Good evening, all of you. Uh, I'm happy to join with you in this uh, great knowledge forum. Now, I welcome the presenters uh, to give your uh, valuable presentations. Presenters. Well, we have we have got about four presenters. Number one is T M Jalaja Mary, research scholar of Anavalangani College. Anti Subhamol, research scholar from Anavalangani College, and Anisha Ashabin, a research scholar from Anavalangani College. Ajita Mol, uh, a from yeah, she's also a research scholar from Anavalangani College. Uh, hope they are present here and. Uh, to 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 tell more specifically about Mahalakshmi, ma'am, like uh, you know, uh, she has been a professor for a decade, so that's a, a very positive stroke that she could contribute more to the research scholars who would be present in their papers. And you know, she has conducted and organized a number of you know, national and international workshops. That is a added advantage to have her here with us. And she has participated and presented papers in national and international programs, uh, which were highly appreciated and applauded. And in that way, uh, we are proud to have ma'am here. Uh, her articles are even published in UGC journals, and uh, that were received best faculty award for the academic achievements. So that is another credit to ma'am. And you know, uh, she has uh, she has produced you know sent personal result many a times in her uh, institution where she had been uh, serving. Uh, ma'am is you know very particularly interested to take part in a kind of academic activity uh, than any other work she would like to take up, and she's more helpful. Uh, to the younger generation, like Nizi Mizigil, who helps and brings out the poets, and she brings out more scholars in her own interest. And many area of her interest is post-colonial literature. That's a very, very specific and significant topic to this particular day. And she's also, you know, interested in feminism and linguistics. So these two uh, topics can add advantage to the research scholars who present can uh, attain more knowledge from her appreciation and review. And she provides a wonderful counseling, as I said in the um, in uh, earlier in earlier presentation. So, uh, ma'am is really you know a gift to us today, uh, ma'am. We are really happy. You can call them one by one. The first one is Jalaja Mary. Yes, sir. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. yes sir. Jalaja thank Mary. You, thank you so much. Fine. So nice of you. Sir, good evening, all. My topic is Cultural Exile and the Quest for the Self in James Joyce's Thesis. Uh, so it is about the people's search for a meaningful life in the modern world. The characters Leopold Bloom and Stephen Dedalus, they both feel completely alienated and alone in turn of the century Dublin. So they don't go they don't get along with their families. Nobody appreciates the work they do. And also, they are excluded from the society. They spend their day drifting through Dublin, conversating about the fulfilling lives they want to live, and looking for a place where they truly feel like they belong. While their urban alienation might be a specifically modern feeling. So here, Joyce suggests that they desire to figure out where one belongs is a powerful universal feeling that motivates all human beings to go on quest for of their own. So here, Joyce, he was an Irish novelist, short story writer, poet, and literary critic. He was born in Dublin into a middle class family. He is regarded as one of the most influential and important writers of the 20th mm -hmm. century. And this uh, novel, Ulysses, it deals with the thoughts and actions of a single day in the life of Steve Dallas, Leopold Bloom, and Bloom's wife, Molly. And 
the thoughts which pass in the minds of the characters are all described in full detail so this novel it covers only one day in the lives of the characters but the sweep of the ideas is so vast that it seems to cover the whole of human civilization ancient and modern the novel is divided into 18 episodes which are knit together by the common motifs which keep recurring and bind them together so normally if we read a novel we all have an expectation that what is going to happen next but here between the novel ulysses nothing happens like that we can see only a stream of ideas flowing before us but the ideas are so selected that the novel becomes a picture of the whole of human history ah uh-huh. james joyce he wants to say something about that he does not select events and ideas in such a way as to make the atmosphere wholly tragic or wholly comic in life tragic and comic elements heroic and trivial incidents interesting and dull things are inextricably mixed so we all know that in our life in a person's life there is something mixed together maybe it is tragic and comic and uh, so nothing will happen like only tragedy is in one's life and here the character leopold bloom he is an advertising agent who moves about dublin doing his insignificant work but he has the spirit of ulysses the great hero and adventurer who was a great warrior as well as a cunning schemer he is a jew of dublin and it an exile he has a multiple personality and he has the curiosity of a scientist but is fond of parading his unscientific half truths he is not highly educated and a strain of vulgarity in his nature he is admirable at one time and disgusting at another joyce not only relates him to ulysses but also to shakespeare and numerous other personalities of history and literature the characters go back to history and legend and yet belong to dublin so here we get a picture of human life as it is found all over the world at the same time we find here a graphic picture of dublin life in the first quarter of this century and the characters leopold bloom and stephen dedalus they are considered as a exiles here and they feel largely disconnected from dublin society and search in vain for a place where they can fit in bloom's colleagues they disrespect him he fails to sell his ad and he has few real friends as the jewish son of an immigrant he also faces prejudice similarly stephen feels that his calling in life is to explore beauty and truth through literature but nobody in dublin takes him seriously except to try to profit of him his friends don't care about him meanwhile he is drowning in debt and on the brink of starvation despite their differing circumstances bloom and stephen they share the feeling of being exiled within their own city and they also become alienated from their families and lose control over their homes after his mother dies and his irresponsible father takes over stephen's family falls into poverty and despair so he leaves his home and his frustration and resentment at his father's frequently resurface for instance he develops an elaborate theory of hamlet to suggest that fatherhood is meaningless even though he is really just trying to soothe the pain of his own abandonment so, and bloom struggles to feel that he truly belongs in his family he is haunted by his father's suicide and his infant son rudy's untimely death and he thinks his male bloodline is all but cursed bloom desperately wants to have a son but he is too afraid of losing another child to even try to have another son in turn this fear threatens his relationship with his wife molly who has started seeing other men like blaze boylan her manager thus bloom's family life is just like a, like his social and professional lives he finds himself on the outside looking in desperately trying to make a place for himself significantly 
Both Stephen and Bloom leave home without their house keys and later find that. Therefore, in Ulysses, Bloom and Stephen's main concern is how they can overcome their sense of alienation. So this means that they want to define and claim a place in the world so that they can feel that they belong somewhere and start to work towards a fulfilling, meaningful life. This is why Joyce, he links these protagonists to the Odyssey and Hamlet, which also focus on questions of home, belonging, identity, and disposition. So for years, Odysseus struggles to make it home to Ithaca, and he wonders if another man will have taken his place when he arrives. So similarly, Bloom wanders Dublin during the day, charting his course back home and wondering if Molly will leave him for Blaze Boylan. And Stephen struggles to hope with his identity and plan his future after his mother's death, just like Hamlet after his father's. Both protagonists also build up elaborate fantasies that represent the happy, fulfilled lives they want. Bloom dreams of becoming a politician, publishing stories in the paper, and of having a joyous, happy life family. Stephen imagines himself as a literary messiah, saving Ireland from ignorance through art. While un unrealistic and unachievable, these fantasies show how deeply Bloom and Stephen want to overcome their personal, professional, and social exile. And their epic journeys intersect halfway tr through the novel, and although they don't realize it at first, Joyce makes it clear that the key to their quest is each other, like a father and son. So Stephen and Bloom, they promise each other to help and they will overcome alienation and establish a more solid identity. Bloom wants to care for a son and fills his house, while Stephen needs a responsible father figure and a place to stay. Bloom wants intellectual stimulation, while Stephen wants someone to take his writing seriously. Thus, Bloom takes a fatherly interest in Stephen, protectively follows him around and then invites him over. So something happens is the it is a surprising one that Stephen mostly ignores Bloom and looks down on him as intellectually inferior. He refuses to stay at Bloom's house and wanders off into the night. However, at the end of the novel, it becomes clear that the meeting gives them both the tools they need to resolve their problems individually. And after, making, after meeting Stephen, Bloom reevaluates his feeling about fatherhood and family, and he starts to reconcile with Molly. Meanwhile, Stephen finally gains the courage and conviction that he needs to dedicate himself to art. Thus, while they do not instantially find the sense of belonging that they fantasize about, Bloom and Stephen do overcome their alienation and take the first step towards fulfilling their desires. Thank you. Yes. Jalaja Mary, have you completed your presentation? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, you have uh, wonderfully explained. Your presentation was uh, crystal clear and uh, Really happy that uh, you have presented your paper on post-colonial literature and you have uh, taken uh, James Joyce's work, uh, Ulysses. Uh, so in that, you have uh, dealt the theory post-colonial studies. Uh, my suggestion, you can, along with this, you can go with the theories like uh, Buildings Roman and Consular Roman. Uh, this also you can go with. This is what my suggestion you can... Uh, Go with uh, these kind of theories also. You can an analyze this, uh, the same uh, story in uh, such kind of theories. Okay, ma'am. I will try, ma'am. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. The next one. Yeah, yes. the next presenter is Subha Mool, a uh, research yes, scholar. Yes, from... yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm present. Uh, yes. Am I audible? Yeah, you yes, are audible. Yes, you are audible. 
let me con- uh, continue. Mahalakshmi, ma'am, her title is Human Displacement, Hardship and Hope of Undocumented Afghan Expatriates in Nadia Hashimi's fiction, When the Moon is Low. So human displacement okay. is the hot topic she goes on. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead, ma'am. Uh, Mahalakshmi, ma'am, if you would like to add something, you can add it. Yes, sir. Let, let her start, sir. Let her begin this. Fine, uh, ma'am. Fine. Yes, sir. May I start? May I yeah, start? Go ahead, yes, Bama, yes, you can. Continue. You can. Continue. Okay. as yes, respected dr l mahalakshmi ma'am the professors and also the peoples who are gathered here a very good evening to you all and uh, let me introduce my topic my topic is on a human displacement hardship and hope of undocumented afghan expatriates in nadia hashmi's fiction when the moon is low and here i am going to present the plight of uh, afghan people and uh, how afghan afghans become undocumented expatriates because uh, of a continuous wars uh, social structure and terrorism um, with the help of uh, the nadia hashmi's uh, work that is uh, nadia hashmi's fiction when the moon is low so you know uh, immigrants uh, immigrants or people who have uh, uh, migrated to a foreign country in order to live permanently they are with uh, official permission and they are actually not a natives of uh, that particular country uh, they migrate uh, for various reasons like um, uh, professional gains uh, some economical gains uh, uh, better livelihood uh, sports uh, studies political issues or wars religious purposes and many other reasons uh, for uh, taking uh, for uh, for uh, going as a immigrant to another country but there are a certain kind of people who tries to enter another country without uh, official or uh, without uh, legal documents and they are referred as uh, undocumented people or uh, as, uh, some uh, or in another way we can call them as illegal aliens undocumented expatriates uh, means uh, that they are the people who have crossed the borders illegally and also living in a foreign country without legal documents and they are unlawful to the policies and protocols uh, uh, of that particular country and also violate, violating the immigration law of that country and this paper that uh, that is uh, my paper that documents uh, the difficulties experienced by an undocumented afghan expatriates when they crossed borders and also they hope to enter the new country that would change the life of them and you know uh, afghanistan is a wide ranging uh, refugee producing territory in the world and uh, afghan afghan refugees they are the, actually they are the natives of afghanistan who left their own nation as a result of huge turmoil of terrorism wars and persecution and uh, there is a uh, continuous conflicts violence and insecurities in their own uh, country compelled them to abandon their native country and uh, Uh, during the time of uh, soviet inv- invasion in afghanistan in 1979 uh, it had uh, marked the beginning of uh, international migration of afghan people from their own nation to the neighboring countries like iran pakistan indians india and tajikistan and so many countries mm-hmm. almost half of the people in afghan fled from uh, their own country uh, because of this uh, cruel uh, things that happen in their own country and when soviet inv- invasion left they again began to return their own homeland but their migration doesn't end uh, by reasons of uh, uh, civil wars and uh, um, uh, some groups that is some uh, fundamentalistic uh, uh, fundamentalistic groups like uh, uh, mujahideen groups uh, that is one of the mujahideen uh, mujahideen group uh, named taliban etc and most of people also experience the internal displacement by reasons of military actions and violence that happen in their own country as a result of soviet in, uh, invasion there were ox- approximately 2 million afghans internally displaced from rural to urban areas the afghan civil war and taliban totalitarianism brought continuous insecurity and conflict and that also caused internal this internal as well as external displacement of afghan people 
and my writer uh, nadia hashmi uh, she is an afghan descendant uh, who has pictured the pathetic plight of afghanistan in her novels uh, like uh, uh, the pearl that broke its shells when the moon is low and uh, um, a house without windows and uh, two more novels is also there and in early 1970s uh, her parents that is my writer nadia hashmi's par parents uh, they were migrated from their native uh, afghanistan to the united states and they intended to return back to their own town but the country is ravaged by the turmoil of war and terrorism so they uh, decided to settle in united states and um, she this uh, and uh, nadia hashmi she is growing as an afghan american actually she is an american she is born in america uh, but her parents they are uh, afghan they are uh, they are from afghanistan and uh, as growing as an afghan american nadia hashmi lives in a household of afghan family members and who are keeping rich afghan culture and that leads her interest on the issues of refugees and immigrants of afghanistan and see she begins to portray the impact of afghanistan war and the rise of fundamentalist groups that forced afghans to abandon their own nation and she also portrays the difficulties of middle class family and when they decide to flee for their uh, safety safety of the foreign from foreign land and um, i am taking uh, the novel uh, novel when the moon is low for my study and it is the second novel of nadia hashmi and it is a story about uh, an afghan family who are fleeing from afghanistan by reason of persecution um, after the taliban take over the country and uh, ferry uh, and the, the main protagonist of the novel is uh, fariba and uh, she is uh, a school teacher and she is a very bold uh, lady who has faced who have, who have who has faced many struggles and uh, she has uh, also a claustrophobic uh, childhood and uh, uh, she states that uh, she states it in the very first line of the novel as my fate was sealed in blood on the day of my birth and this shows the status of a woman child in afghanistan and later she uh, actually uh, she she was grown up and later she finds love in her arranged marriage with the uh, the character mahmud an engineer in kabul and after her marriage is permitted uh, after her marriage uh, it, that is permitted to pursue her dreams and she begins to teach in a elementary school and then however all her happy days came to an end after the assassination of her husband by taliban taliban fundamentalist since her fair family becomes the target she forced to flee from her native land with her children so in order to protect her children from the ceaseless, ceaseless war destruction and thrust by taliban she decides to cross the country's border with the forced papers to reach europe for a hope of survival so she doesn't want to come out from there uh, so from her uh, uh, shelter that is uh, she doesn't want to come out uh, from afghanistan but she has to come out because of uh, in order to save her children so she says that in uh, we can uh, we can uh, understand uh, from her point of view that nadia hashmi mentions uh, the the uh, the pain of the the character feriba when she come out from her own country she said i feared my son would be swallowed by the taliban so that is why that is the reason she wants to come out from her own country i feared my son would be swallowed by the taliban and as a woman there was little i could do to help us to survive so uh, then again fariba she she is ready to um, take the travel uh, from uh, that is take the illegal travel uh, she risks her life in the dangerous travel under darkness the state of fariba changes from a, actually in afghanistan uh, women should not uh, come out from their family without a male ex, uh, escort uh, when taliban took control 
So the state of Eriba changes. Uh, she is a, a respectable mother, and that changes to a desperate res refugee in another country. And with forced paper and the kindness of stranger, she and her son undergo a distress journey. She is frightening to step out from her borderline of uh, her borderline of her life. And she says, there wasn't much time for me to reconsider. And if I had just one more day, I might have lost my nerve. The desert before us made me dizzy with the fear. And um, Fariba thinks herself that uh, her decision may be wrong, uh, may be or may not be. But she has to accept the reality. It is very difficult to cross the border with the forced paper. She, ha she has scared a lot when thinking on the difficulty she is going to face. And uh, uh, that shows uh, in the words of Nadia Hashmi as night. Uh, she said, uh, that is Fariba, uh, she said, the night, the time when the border was most vulnerable to trespass was approaching. And holes opened up and scared, desperate people scrolled through while war turned some Afghans into lions, and it had turned a good number of us into mice as well. And in the novel, When the Moon is Low, Feriba, many Af not only Feriba, many Afghans have decided to flee from Afghanistan um, uh, uh, because the uh, conflicts there in their hometown, and many men and women begin to leave their country without their willingness. And women's uh, transnational migration is tough than men, you know. Uh, uh, when the women actually women when the women want to come out from their family they have uh, they have to bring a male as their escort uh, otherwise uh, they will be under uh, um, high threat so plea from Af afghanistan for women are dangerous uh, because they restrict the patriarchal structure of their society uh, patriarchal structure of their society and women cannot come out with a, without a male es es escorts. And Abdul Rahim, uh, who is ready to come uh, for, uh, who is a neighbor of uh, Fariba, who is ready to come to escort uh, Fariba for her tra travel. And when a person wants to flee from one country to another without legal procedure, need a lot of money, you know, uh, there are so many people, they are ready to help for a person who are in trouble but there are uh, certain kind of people who are using the uh, troubled person for their own benefits so uh, likewise fairy boy is also cheated by uh, uh, by uh, by the persons uh, on the way persons and when a person um, that is the, the character uh, that uh, so this Nadia Hashmi introduced a van uh, van driver and she he is um, seated her uh, she, uh, she he is used her uh, for uh, making money and that the character Asim wants Feriba to be cautious on their journey there are many people who are ready to help people uh, but uh, you know the van driver he she, he uses the chance and. Uh, and uh, crossing border uh, with the forced paper is a difficult task that will lead them to risk a, risk their life and uh, the roads they have taken to ride is very tricky to follow sometimes they have to walk on their foot uh, you know there are many smugglers smugglers maybe crossing undercover on night time and they have to be very careful in their journey and uh, they have to be uh, they have to be very careful for each and every step they have taken very um and uh, if they catch by these smugglers or uh, or uh, taliban fanta bandalis uh, their life will end and during the journey in night Feriba's daughter, uh, there was an incident, and during the journey in night, uh, Feriba's daughter uh, cut her ankle against a rock, and she is in severe pain, but she could not cry aloud because um, if she cried aloud, uh, then their life will come under a th thread. And uh, there is another one incident that happens, an hour later, this incident happened, and there was a mother. Uh, who slipped in darkness with a two-year-old kid in her arms and the baby's arm is twisted but they couldn't do anything because there is a chance to a person if they find out uh, they they may be returned back to their own country so they have to be very careful 
and uh, feriba actually feriba she has decided to go to europe uh, to ask help from uh, ask help from her sister in england and uh, she has to travel to iran and then to turkey and then uh, she has to reach uh, she has to reach uh, um, this uh, england undocumented refugees could not work in other countries there is a, this is another threat undocumented refugees they could not work in other countries they work illegally in order to make money for their living experiences and they have to work hard for getting uh, even uh, even they work hard they getting only low wage since they are not the natives of the sheltered country and uh, Uh, the character salim and uh, he is a uh, he is a um, son of this fariba the protagonist of fariba and salim he became he becomes the breadwinner of his family since he is the eldest male in the family after his father so she, he has to be the breadwinner of his family and he works hard in the farm in order to make more money to travel uh, he wants to go to england he do, he doesn't want to settle uh, on the way like uh, uh, hirat or iran he wants to go to england uh, for uh, uh, reaching her uh, aunt reaching his aunt and the uh, refugee from the shelter tells uh salim that he has to be smart and withdraw the thought of going to england he insists uh, him to stay the place they have got and earn money for living uh, but uh, salim is not ready to accept he wants to go to england <laughs> and salim work hard to earn money for the further travel to england and it is very difficult to him since it is the first time he is working for earning money and he is under age and also he could not save more money because of uh, low wage given by the uh, people the price for the documents food and smuggling fee are higher than his earnings so and some natives you know some natives of the country provide shelter to refugee on the thought of making money by using them and um, the refugee risk their risk their life to travel from one country to another with the hope of finding an asylum and regarding asylum uh, uh, asylum is not available uh, in most of the countries and uh, uh and the salim he stays uh, in attic square where uh, there are so many boys are there um, they ha- they are also facing a tough journey and uh, in, uh, in 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 uh, there are so many refugee camps uh, or there the refugee camps they didn't give give to the refugees uh, um uh, yeah proper hygienic place and uh, the people in the, in the in the asylum or in the shelter they are infected by many diseases and it has an annex space to sleep um and annex place in a annex uh, space to sleep and salim's uh, one of uh, salim's friend in at square wished to go to germany but uh, he don't have legal proper legal papers uh, to find an asylum there so, so he he stayed the place he doesn't want to stay and the un- the undocumented refugee in another country uh, when you become an uh, undocumented refugee uh, refugee in another country um there is a there, there's a kind of uh, or, yeah, there's a kind of insecurity and the people who is uh, longing for their own uh, nation they are like a bird that miss their root and their mother and they are like an alien in an alienated country even though they feel like an alien and, but the thing is even though they feel like an alien they don't want to return back to their watch on country they can stay there with uh, the struggles they are they will face or they face uh, but they don't want to return back from their own nation because of the problem they have faced there and uh, when they when when they when the expatriates are in their native country you know there are in each and every country they have set certain cultures they have followed they have followed many rituals uh, from birth to till death uh, likewise afghan people they have many uh, rituals in their um, 
from their birth birth to death but rituals are nothing in an alienated country sometimes there is no one there are, there are no one there is no one is ready to bury a dead body of a refugee they don't have proper place for the burial one of the refugees from the camp died and um, and nadia hashmi uh, beautifully portrays the pain of a refugee as uh, with a word there was no coffin just two pieces of cardboard and it was the best they could do and the best any of them could hope for and and finally thus then nadia hashmi she uh, foregrounds the status of afghan refugee in different countries in her novel and she shows the fright frightening part of afghan afghan natives and their underground journey to the alien countries in order to save their life and the character the protagonist um, fariba and her son together deal a huge trials and tri tribulations during their journey and the disappointed and heartbroken fariba has no choice but to continue her continue her life journey in england with the hope of finding a play, peaceful life thank you ma hello ma yes 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 subamol you have given a very good presentation and uh, uh, here the author has given uh, the title as mm. when the moon is low 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 yes nadia hasmi has given uh, his a reason she is a recent uh, writer and uh, recently she has uh, she has been awarded uh, for her best novels uh, the uh, pearl that broke us well, uh, shell and other novels yeah. and uh, uh, how do you uh, relate the moon illusion uh, through your uh, theme post colonial studies moon illusion actually actually moon moon that reflects uh, uh, the character uh, feriba uh, mm -hmm. and also the people uh, actually in in their own country they can do whatever they want when the moon is low the title that uh, what i thought is uh, when the people they are in their own country they can uh, do whatever they want uh, they can uh, even though many struggles they have uh, they have faced regarding culture or some other issues they can do whatever they want in their own country but re regarding as a immigrant in immigrant in another country or uh, illegal um, immigrants or undocumented people in another country uh, means it is very difficult their life is very tough and they are feeling like a, uh, like a low like a kind of a low uh category that's why uh, uh, when uh, the moon that comes low uh, when they taking uh, when they are in another country uh, that is what i feel yes yes okay good but you can uh, view this novel in feministic approach also am i right yeah actually i'm doing research based on the feministic approach uh, okay. my thesis on about the resilience and perseverance resilience and perseverance and strength of this afghan women uh, in in the in the in the face for the face of uh, uh, patriarchy and uh, patriarchy and fundamentalism and so on ma'am i'm doing research on based on feminism ma'am Yes, Subhamul. Yes, Subhamul. Not only dealing the themes, or we have to uh, give something moralistically. We have to do something for the uh, youngsters through our uh, researches. Am I right? Yes, ma'am. Yes, yes. That yes. is that we can do. Okay, wish you all the best. Uh, thank okay, you. Good, good presentation, Subhamul. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, next sir. Hello. Yes, sir. Next, next Hello. participant. Yeah, the Anisha next participant Shibin. is Anisha Shibin uh, from Manavalangani College. Okay. And, and she's presenting uh, under the title, Marginalization of Colored and the Violation of Assimilation in Lorian Hansberry's A Reason in the Sun. Okay, so, sir. So the center is marginalization. Okay, Yes, Anita, you can present. Good evening, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good evening, ma'am. So, yes. my title is Marginalization of Color and Violation of Assimilation in Lorraine Hansberry's Arizona Sun. 
so the united states has uh, always been a place of racial diversity uh, so the term african american literature uh, basically refers to works written by people of african origin uh, in the united states so in african american literature uh, racism is a major theme so uh, it is widely accepted that uh, marginalization uh, racial groups or uh, refused privileges uh, so uh, racism has become a huge political and legal issues in the united states uh, african american writers uh, in the 1960s like be- they began to see black as their major audience they uh, especially wrote uh, for this majority of this particular audience group like they decide to dwell deeper into their own culture uh, heritage and society uh, here the author lorraine hansberry uh, like uh, she is a granddaughter of a freed slave hansberry was raised in a black neighborhood on uh, chicago apartheid was still legal and it's widespread in the southern uh, like southern northern united states at that point of time uh, so Uh, here this hansberry she lived in illinois hansberry's uh, family was among the first black families to settle into a white area and they were uh, attacked by their neighbors hansberry stated that uh, she had a strong desire to write down her experience and here uh, her writing especially uh, rise in the sun is based on her family suffering Uh, when they settled into a white chicago neighborhood so it is her autobiographical work she is among the first writer to depict african american life in a realistic uh, realistic manner uh, so uh, when this particular play a risen in the sun is premiered it received excellent reviews from both white as well as this black people uh, since it explores so many crucial themes during during 1950s uh, in the united states this particular uh, play can be regarded as a turning point in american art uh, so the drama like it skillfully depicts the various aspects of uh, uh, african american uh, uh, lives in america like uh, racial prejudice uh, black identity uh, basic human rights all these things are discussed here in this play uh, it also concentrates on black people's liberties so this play a uh, rising in the sun Uh, depicts the life of the uh, family called Engels. Uh, so this Engels, the family people, like they are uh, African American people. Okay, so uh, they lived in Chicago uh, around 1950s. So every member of this particular family uh, seems to have a dream. They aspire to live a dignified life. Uh, so they uh, reside, like they settled in a rental apartment. Like it's very small. The apartment is very small. So in this play, this particular apartment is described as a rat trap. Uh, so they desire to relocate to a comfortable apartment. Like they just wanted to move away from the small apartment. So the Engels are just about to get some insurance payment uh, when the play begins. So this fund comes from Mr. Engels' life uh, life insurance. So each one of the families. family members like uh, they has a notion of what he or she wants to do with that cash so mrs enger uh, who is called as mama in the play she wishes to purchase a home uh, to realize a goal she and her husband cherishes like walter lee uh, their son he wants to invest the money in an alcohol business with his friends so he feels that this investment will permanently fix the family's financial troubles uh ruth like who is the wife of walter she agrees with mrs engers like uh, his mo- her mother in law and uh, wishes that both she and walter can give their son uh, who is called as travels a uh, more uh, freedom and opportunities finally mrs engers uh, engers daughter who is called as benita like she wishes to use the fund to pay for her medical school tuition so this uh, angus this particular family member they just argue with and uh, this call is now being recorded and uh, she's uh, related to the lack of fixed identity and she's uh, 
a nuclear bomb survivor and she chooses to keep her experiences to herself and her choices result in not having a fixed japanese identity and this unfixed and adventurous nature provides her to choose what she wants to be and wherever she goes she adapts the space and ready to survive and faces challenges readily and this makes her a strong female character and then uh, on the contrary to that uh, sajid's mother in the novel uh, is uh, portrayed as a faithful warm person and uh, she represent a third world a typical third world a uh, woman uh, who values the traditional way of living and uh, uh, her main function uh, uh, is uh, uh, to take care of her sons and daughter and arrange their marriages and uh, this image corresponds the mentally mentality of the average third world woman who is traditional and devoted to her family and this makes to view her as a symbol of traditional muslim family before the partition of india for sajid his mother was home and home was his mother and his final decision of asking hiroko to marry him is also dependent on the death of his mother he thinks of such a marriage as a betrayal of his mother and tradition is Uh, thereby embodied with sajad's mother and when she dies he is brave enough to confront tradition and uh, marry the woman he truly loves and this represent a picture of indian muslim woman who is traditional without any exceptions and uh, uh patriarch if we see patriarchy and colonialism they are uh, almost equivalent in nature and uh, as in colonial rule uh, people of their own nation are given no liberty to do as per their wishes uh, uh, and in a typical muslim families the situation is pathetic for women and it is expressed through sajid's brother uh, ikbal and uh, he seems uh, to uh, he consider women uh, to be his property and uh, he th- uh, he further threatens uh, 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 his wife that is he igbal uh, threatens his wife uh, by expressing that uh, i am allowed to have a second wife so igbal believes that his wife to be a less of a wife and uh, if she does not allow him to marry the mistress Uh, igbal wife uh, also st- seems to be trapped in bad living conditions as igbal leaves to log uh, lahu uh, he does not provide any more for his family and uh, she might not be able to work for traditional reasons so here uh, yes the uh, the, uh, the trapped condition of the uh, third world a woman inside the family because of the patriarchy uh, patriarchal society is uh, noted and uh, he, uh, but the central character hiroko is portrayed as a strongest one and who overcomes all the traumatic past and uh, as a nuclear bomb survivor without the help of any male members who was, uh, was not uh, not uh, pres- uh, not uh, present uh and in her life anymore and he travels one country to uh, another one uh by having a hope that she also have life after this to continue and she adapts the language and lifestyle the place where she resides and she considers world as a nation and not stick to a particular nation or a state and uh, she is also pictured as a nationless a religionless and easily able to cross borders or compromise uh, without surrendering strength or agency and uh, uh, in addition uh, here samshi also introduces hiroka as a fearless woman warrior fighting as a stubborn enemy and uh, uh, she is 
quoted as she had become in fact a figure out of bit and the character who loses everything and is uh, born a new in blood and then uh, hiroko also resents the word hibakusha which means the atomic bomb uh, and uh, as uh, she explains to the character elizabeth that uh, she doesn't want to hide the hide the burns that uh she has on her back uh it is uh, just uh, not uh, it is not because that people uh, sometimes is to judge her uh, by this uh, attack either so she just uh, she just not uh, want people uh, to make her judge she just wants her life as uh, per her wish and uh, uh, also uh, her idea is Uh, if uh, it is known to the people and it reduces one to the bomb and uh, also hiroko's character is a symbol for the solution to oppression and power imbalances that based on gender bias and re- uh, religion ethnicity race uh, language and nationality and uh, she's being aware of the existence of uh, uh this kind of uh things present in the world like uh, uh, gender bias religion ethnicity race and uh, uh, she doesn't want to be stick out uh, stick in those things and uh, she left us she left japan against her desire but at the same time she was uh, resentful to the state of uh, dehumanization and thank you that's all yes ajita mol you have given a very good presentation uh, overall, uh, from your overall presentation uh, we can uh, come to know the uh, power is power and domination is the overall uh, point of uh, the novel which you have chosen yes ma'am as burn shadows yes, okay ma'am. can you say uh, how power dominates everyone especially uh, the women are say sexually affected and uh, uh, they are incompatible everywhere yes, uh, yes um, so uh, here uh, in my analysis i have dealt with the t- two different uh, categories of women that is uh, one is uh, uh, women from third world and one is uh, women from first world uh nations so if yes. we see uh, on these two bases uh, uh women from third world they are a uh, stick towards their own tradition and customs and uh, even if they face any uh, struggle they they can't able to come out of it uh so in the case of uh, uh, igbal's wife uh when uh when she misses her husband when when he uh, leaves the uh, leaves their family to lahu and left to lahu and the uh, igbal's wife uh, finds hard to survive and uh, uh, she is unable to search for a job and uh, she's she just collapses and uh, in contrary to that if we uh, take the women of third world sorry first world uh, if we uh, take first world women uh, like uh, the central character hiroka uh, when uh, she try to overcome all the uh, traumatic events that she had experienced throughout her life she missed her father her lover and uh, she uh, she's a survivor of uh, a uh, nuclear bomb survivor and apart from all that she gained hope and confidence and she readily uh, have the confidence to travel one country to another to seek uh, you know help and also to make her uh, uh, to uh, to make a new life uh, in an effective manner Yes, yes, very good. Uh, so we, you, there is a political and a personal forces also there, am I right? To the characters, am I right, uh, Ajita? No. Ajita, am I audible? Yes. 
Ajita? Mama, am I audible? Yeah, yes, yes. Yes, Ajita, thank you for your presentation. You have a uh, presentation was wonderful and you have explained uh, mostly about the uh, forces, what are the dominant parts in the uh, burn shadows. Thank you. So next candidate. Yes, uh, uh, ma'am, Dr. Uh, Mahalakshmi, ma'am. Shall we yes, wind up the session? Yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Okay. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Mahalakshmi, for uh, uh, being with us uh, and sharing this uh, session uh, 